current budget that we're working on. The Hold on budget. a second. Don't ask questions about what's on your agenda until we get the meeting started. I, just, on, I don't Steve. think I don't think it's on our agenda, but that's okay. It's related to. I relate. That's okay. Keep keep the relationship. Gotta keep you. Yeah. Gotta keep you in line. Do whatever Mary says. That's that's what I was told it's the a, first day I got a, here. It's a story of my life. I mean, I got more people giving me <laughs> advice than I know what the hell to do with this. <laughs> so are we it's waiting? Protecting for you from yourselves. There you go. I think we're waiting for Mr. Uh, Mr. Tony, and uh, and the two o'clock hour is almost upon us. So we're not quite there. You can have a little more popcorn. Well, I'll start the meeting at two. And if we have okay. to wait for Joe at some point, we'll wait, but we'll just get it going because we do have, yeah. we, I mean, we have another item first. We do have the minutes and that could take a while. <laughs> okay. <Better not. laughs> I am going to call the order of the Malibu City Council Administration Finance Subcommittee special meeting of Wednesday, November 30th, uh, 2022 at 2 p.m. And welcome, Joe. Um, this meeting will be held via teleconference only in order to reduce the risk of spreading COVID-19 in pursuant to AB 361 and the County of Los Angeles Public Health Officers revised, our order revised September 22nd of 22. All votes taken during this teleconference meeting will be called by roll call vote and the vote will be publicly reported. No physical location from which members of the public may observe the meeting and offer public comment will be provided. Please view the meeting, which we live streamed at malibucity.org forward slash video and apparently malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting. Members of the public are encouraged to have already submitted email correspondence to mlinden at malibucity.org before the meeting begins. Um, you can send them now if you like. Members of the public may also speak during the meeting through the Zoom application. You must first sign up to speak before the item you would like to speak on has been called, and then you must be present on the Zoom conference to be recognized. And if you raised your hand on the Zoom, uh, this Zoom meeting, I will gladly recognize you to speak during the item you want to speak on. So please visit malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting and follow the directions for signing up to speak and to download the Zoom application. Can we have roll call, please? Yes, Council Member Pearson? Yes. Council Member Uring? Here. You have a quorum. Okay. Can we have a motion on the approval of the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. I will second it. Thank you. Council Member Uring? Yes. Council Member Pearson? Yes. Motion carries. Can we have a report on the posting of the agenda? The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on November 29th. 2022. Okay, our first item of business is number 3A, approval of minutes from November 16th, 2022. I'll move to approve the minutes, Mikey. I will second it while double checking. There is no, no one member of the public that wishes to address this item? No, there's not. Okay, thank you. Can we have a vote, roll call on this? Council Member Uring? Yes. Council Member Pearson? Yes. Motion carries. Great. Now to get to the exciting stuff, we have item 3B, fiscal year 2021-2022, fourth quarter financial report. Can we have that report, please? Yes, uh, Council Member Pearson and Uring, I'll uh, run through it, give you an oral presentation. Uh, but before I get going, I wanna say thank you to the finance team. The team is doing an amazing job. Uh, they've kept the city's finances strong while dealing with a couple of transitions of my role specifically. Uh, this past year and, and also some turnover of, of staff. And so a special thanks to uh, Renee Nierman and Joni Hand for all of their work, not only on this report, but uh, everything they do. So thank you. Um, now I'm going to give a high level overview and then, then drill down a little bit on the reports um, to talk about some of the significant variances and drivers um, for our results that uh, of how we finished uh, FY 21-22 in the in the fourth quarter. Um, and overall, we are in a very, very strong position. Um, so for all funds, our revenues that we received came in at 65.2 million. Um, the unaudited amount uh, was 63.8 million. There's a little bit of timing variance there due to some FEMA OES reimbursements. 
Um, and then on the expenditure side, we came in at 47.2 million uh, for our year-to-date actuals and the unaudited amount is 48.8 million. Those variances are due a little bit to the special revenue funds um, and mainly the, um, uh, the water treatment facility. Um, going, going into the general fund, uh, that's really what we're gonna focus on. That's where the council has the most discretion and these are the general discretionary dollars. Um, so the general fund, our unaudited amount came in at 51.9 million and uh, our expenditures came in at 36.7 million. So that's about a $15 million difference of, of revenue over expenditures to close the year. So that ultimately uh, falls to the bottom line or to our fund balance. Um, so I'll, I'll dig into that a, a, a little bit. Um, so, uh, property tax, uh, or excuse me, let me, let me back up a second. Our general fund re revenue. So the amended budget that you're looking at, and I'll, I'll direct you to page a one. So that's really where we start to get into the statistical amount or statistical numbers. Um, the amended budget, that's really our adjustments on the year. So the adopted budget is approved by city council. Um, typically that's done in June via resolution, and then the amended budget includes the ongoing appropriation revisions that occur throughout the fiscal year. So the budget's really an organic document. The adopted budget's just a point in time, and then we're making adjustments throughout the year. So on page A5, we detail out all of those adjustments that were done during 21-22. That was about 9.8 million, almost entirely general fund. Um, and, and that was all conducted during the year. So. That's the, the crosswalk to get you to the amended budget. We're gonna mostly look at the amended budget compared uh, to the received dollars or the unaudited amount. Um, so going back to page A1, um, again, mostly looking at that received column versus the amended, uh, our, our main drivers are property tax, other taxes or TOT is the main one there, licenses and permits um, and service charges. So on the property tax side, we came in about uh, 345,000 better than anticipated um, and property values continue to rise uh, as we all know in the real estate market. Um, and that's, I anticipate that'll continue. Um, on the other taxes side, so TOT came in much better than expected, both TOT private and TOT hotels, motels, um, much better than expected. And there was an increase in travel um, and also our increased rate that went into effect January 1st of 21. Um, and we also had assumed in our numbers that the hosted rental ordinance uh, would go into effect, but that ultimately wasn't approved by the California Coastal Commission. So we continued to uh, bring in that increased revenue. Um, so just between those two alone, that was two and a half million more dollars uh, than we anticipated. Um, and then sales and use tax, that was about 1.3 million better than anticipated. So retail and dining continue to do better than expected as people return to normal spending, um, especially with restaurants doing really well uh, in our community. Um, and then uh, one other item in that category, document, documentary transfer tax, that was about 611,000 better, but that's really property tax related, uh, really property um, associated. Uh, licenses and permits, that was 700,000 better, predominantly planning review fees and all other building related permits, electrical, plumbing, et cetera. Um, and then also uh, our film permits uh, are embedded in there and that actually came in 210,000 uh, higher than we expected. Um, service charges, that's really development related. Main drivers are geo, were geo soils, engineering and environmental health review. That was about 870,000 better than expected. And then all of those positives were offset um, a little bit by some of the other government revenue. There was uh, a decrease on monies that we haven't really received yet uh, through ARPA and FEMA reimbursements. ARPA, the second tranche of ARPA actually came in in 22, 23 in the current fiscal year. Um, and then there's some losses in interest earnings of unrealized gains as interest rates continue to go up and our fair market value on some of our investments are below book value. But that said, our, our revenues were incredibly uh, high and much better than we than we thought. So looking now, on, starting on page A6, the general fund expenditures. Um, let me scroll down on my pages here. Um, 
we're going to look at the year-to-date actuals versus the amended, our main drivers, uh, and really overall across all expenditures, the story is that we have savings and salaries and benefits. As we know, we've had a lot of vacancies um, and also savings and professional services. So we may not have used certain um, consultants or contractors as much as we thought across the, the whole organization. Um, but in looking at that, really where there were some of the biggest variances were in the public safety services, um, the city clerk, the street maintenance program and public works. And what I mean by that is where there was a low percentage of the spend against the budget, as well as a significant dollar amount. Um, so on the public safety side, we, we saw about 1 million in savings and that was really to contract services with the sheriff's beach team, uh, parking enforcement, animal control, some equipment per, uh, purchases. And, uh, and, and operating and maintenance. So just some things that just weren't as high as we anticipated. We weren't charged as much as we thought we were going to be for some of those services. Um, the city clerk, Councilmember Uring, it looks like you were gonna ask a question. It just the, the sheriff's beach team costs get reduced for us? I mean, I mean, we had the beach team, it was like a million bucks a year we were springing for those guys. and. People complained about that. I'm just, did that number go down, or was that? It's just a, a combination of a whole bunch of stuff. I'm happy to, to answer that. Of course, uh, Susan Duenas would be could give you a better answer. But yeah, when um, um, when the prior service lieutenant was here, um, he worked with uh, with Susan, and they found some um, some some redundancies and some efficiencies that they were able to identify, and that brought the cost down without reducing the service. Cool. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Lieutenant Shad Waters uh, really deserves the credit for that. Um, he really, really took that on and uh, he really went in with a fine tooth comb and, and he found some savings for the city. So. Excellent. Yep. I'm sorry, Joe. No, no problem. Um, another significant uh, variance was in the city clerk's office. We had about 300,000 savings, but that was all salaries and benefits. Um, and then public works, uh, the street maintenance team. We really had budgeted a lot for storm response and anticipation of need there, um, but we ended up having about 566,000 in savings. Um, so some of that was street maintenance for the summer and storm response. Um, and then on public works uh, program 3008, there was about 300,000 savings and that was vacancies as well, salaries and benefits. Um, and then one thing I, I jumped over, we did have some adjustments in the year. So there was about 1.9 million in adjustments from the adopted budget to the amended budget. Um, and about 1.6 million of that was general fund. Uh, so how does that all fall to the bottom line? It, it doesn't quite reconcile perfectly uh, with the fund balance because fund balance is based off prior year actuals and we're Q1 we're or Q4, we're looking more at the budget to budget. Um, but that said, again, we said about 15 million dropped to the bottom line. Um, so if you look at that total general fund bottom line on page A10, uh, you'll see that there was about 69.9 million uh, to start the year growing to 74.4 million. That's just about 15 million or 14 and a half million increase. Um, and then of that, what do you really have discretion over? It's the undesignated amount. So not all of that is discretionary. Um, so the first line on that page is truly the discretionary fund balance amount. And you'll see an increase of about 13.4 million uh, for all the reasons and variances that we uh, just went through. So that's the Q4. We ended uh, FY21-22 in a great position. Uh, and we have an extremely healthy fund balance um, that we can be very strategic about going forward. So any, any questions uh, on Q4? I know I went through that quick, but was trying to uh, trying to provide it in as a uh, summary of a fashion as possible. The, the, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how this result impacts our budget we're working on this year, because there's some significant things that happened here that aren't reflected in the current budget we're we're playing with. Uh, right. But I, I quite, you know, short term rentals. The it was somewhere in the staff report. It says the increase is due to the fact that. We underestimated them based upon the fact we thought the rules were going to change based on trying to go to the Coastal Commission. There was an increase in the TOT tax, I think, got included in there. H have the number of rentals increased? Do we know? I mean, are, is there a any? I'm I just don't know. 
Yeah. C- Councilman Ramirez, I don't know that offhand. We could definitely look into that. Um, I, I would get a sense I would of think whether pe- people are taking advantage anec- of that. Anecdotally, yeah. I think the I think there were an increase. I mean, especially as people started to kind of get out of the pandemic mode and, and get more into travel and tourism. Uh, but I don't know what those numbers are offhand. Yeah, I'm trying to get a sense. You know, I mean, there, you know, there's been again, you know, rumors, and, and I'm getting all sorts of calls. There's some of the rebuilds that are coming in or turning into short-term rentals, and I'm just wondering what the you know if that there's if there's some meaning to that or what's going on. So, so just some if you know the total count if it's gone up if you could if, when it gets to the city council just let us know. That's cool. Okay. Okay. I uh, I saw the number not that long ago and. It didn't increase as much as I thought it would, so I'll be curious to see it again. Yeah. Um, and I do think that that TOT tax increase, which I'm very happy I brought forward, uh, worked out really well. I mean, better than I would have guessed because, well, we have more income coming in than I would have guessed too. So that's fantastic. I'm really glad we did that. And now we have another half cent um, sales tax that right. you factor into the new budget, right? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna, gonna yeah. I was gonna mention that in the Q1 for uh, 22, 23, but yeah. that's where it belongs. You're right. <laughs> I, I would say I went through this, you know, and every single note I made, you highlighted. Um, it's great to see. I mean, it couldn't come at a better time for some of the needs we need to, we things we need to fix, and there are things we need to fix. We all know that, and there's also things we want to do that hopefully can get onto the new council's agenda. Um, so, um, yeah, lots and, you know, the amount less in salaries alone is just really eye catching. And it's no wonder we struggle to get certain things done. I mean, you just can't do it without bodies. Right. So, uh, I, I've never seen a drop like that. Anything close to that, that was pretty stunning. So great report. Um, do we have any members of the public? I see we have two members of the public um, on the call. Anyone have any comments or anyone? Marianne, anyone sign up? Or not Marianne? Marianne is muted. Sorry. No, uh, we don't have anyone signed up for this one. We do have a speaker on the next item. Okay. Well, what? so the motion should be what? Is this, this is receive and file. There's no... It's uh, for this... It's just a review, and then the council will be receiving file. But yeah, okay. It's a, I, I mean, hell of a job, guys. This is this is good news. I mean, I'm not got no other way to cut it. Yeah, and okay. you know, again, all the all the credit goes to the finance team. They're doing a, an amazing job. Yeah, if Renee's got more money hidden back there. Tell her, you know, keep bringing it up. This is good. And and I gotta say, in all my years, you know, the city, city council, whatever. The finance team has been solid. Yeah. It's always been a shining star at the city. It just, it's just always been so solid. And the fact it continues that way with everything we've been through is, is really notable. And what, what a, I mean, that's just great to have that. It really helps, really makes a big difference. I, think I know others. Yeah, others I'm sorry, Mike. Oh, go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. No, I just, I know other cities reading the newspaper alone, you see where other cities at times struggle with that. So, uh, it's great that that's so solid here. So well done. It's amazing, Renee. At least the last I checked, Renee and her team were doing this with Excel spreadsheets, which is, which in itself is is a <laughs> amazing task. Excellent. S- still are to an extent. These these yeah. tables and schedules are yeah. So yeah. there's I mean, there's a lot of reconciling, and it gets uh, can be I, a bit I, messy. I admire <laughs> that's that's pretty good stuff. Being able to do it that way is is not easy. All right, so. Um, any more comments on 3B? No. Okay, let's move on to uh, 3C, fiscal year 2022-2023, first quarter financial report. Can we have a report, please? Yeah, so Q1, uh, typically we don't have a lot to present. Um, you don't typically see a lot of trends happening yet in the first three months of the year through September 30th. Um, and so we haven't traditionally modified our projections. Of course, that being said, we have started to see some things like the TUT uh, that we'll touch on, uh, but we didn't modify the projections. You'll see more of that at the Q2 uh, or the mid-year report. Um, uh, there was really only one amendment so far uh, that you'll see. Um, it's on page, I'll point you to it. Um, 
on page A9 is the only uh, adjustment so far, and that was related to the TUT materials. Um, so we did uh, appropriate some additional funds as we were getting that going. Um, so looking at the tables, you, you might think we're way behind schedule on uh, at 25% of the year. So if you're looking at the percentages, you might say, okay, uh, especially revenues way down. We're nowhere near where we should be at a quarter, but that's because a lot of revenues come in at different tranches, uh, especially property tax that comes in later in the year and two, and then uh, in two different batches. Um, so uh, that said, we can probably reasonably assume that the biggest revenue drivers of property tax, TOT and sales will continue to come in strong this year. Uh, we're not seeing any reason why that wouldn't happen. Um, they exceeded the budget clearly in the last year and uh, we're still going strong. Um, it's just not clear to what extent that'll be yet. Um, where we do see a trend as expected are higher licenses and permits and fees, just as we did in Q4. Uh, <clears throat> we'll continue to see ongoing development and building related activities. Um, and then yes, we passed the TUT uh, measure and that'll go into effect in Q4 of this year. Um, it, it goes live April 1st, so we'll likely see increased revenue uh, that wasn't budgeted for in that quarter, and we'll, we'll include that in our projections at uh, the mid-year report or Q2. Um, expenditures, again, it, it looks like we have savings. We're, we're below the 25% mark on most categories, but we do anticipate that there will be some ramp up in those spending uh, categories, special, especially services and supplies. Some, some of those things are timing throughout the year, not necessarily a straight line month to month. Um, but as we get close, we should see that be closer to budget as we go along. Uh, that said, should still have salary and benefit savings. Although I will say our HR team is doing a, a heck of a job trying to fill positions and we have been filling positions as we go, filling positions as we go. And so I don't expect us to have as much salary and benefit savings as we did in the prior year. Um, so hopefully we start to see that stabilize. Um, so in conclusion, uh, as we start to progress throughout this year and then right around the corner, we're gonna start budgeting for 23, 24, hard to believe. Um, we sh will remain in a conservative budgeting practice, but as we see, we're doing really well on the revenue side and our expenditures are much lower than our revenues. So we're in a good position to be strategic and look at areas of greatest need for additional ongoing operational costs. Um, and furthermore, we will be able to be strategic about how best to use those fund balances. So um, I think the council will be in a really good position to make those strategic decisions as we go forward and, and see what initiatives we need to, we need to make. So uh, with that, we'll be back uh, at the Q2 report in a couple months. Uh, our intention is bringing that to council at the first meeting in February. So we'll have uh, the ANF uh, review that uh, ahead of time. Um, but otherwise uh, things are, are, are running smoothly from a financial standpoint. Cool. Quick question, just look at, in sales and use or uh, sales taxes. I mean, the restaurants are getting a real kick, kiss right now because they've got that alfresco dining going on. Plus they've got the dining going on inside the restaurants. And I don't think many of the restaurants have reduced the number of seats inside. And that's, that's, everybody's having a good time. But one point in time, uh, Richard Mollick mentioned that there may be, an, I, I believe that we did the, Alfresco dining based upon something that says as long as the pandemic is there, they can do that. I can't remember what the exact terms were. And then I know Richard Malika had a question about whether some of the septic systems could handle the addi additional people. I don't know what that is, but just keep that in the back of your mind. So when we get to the next budget, we know what we're supposed to do with that. I, I'm, you know, that's a big number. I mean, that number is, is if we keep going the way we're going, there's no reason to expect it to go down but I just don't know what we're going to do in the future. Yeah. And, then, and not to, oh, go ahead. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, not to speak out of turn and, and uh, city manager McClary could jump in if I, if I misstate it, but I know the team is, has been looking at all the restaurants, making sure they're in compliance, at least with the standards right now for the outdoor dining. Okay. Uh, but yes, at some point that that'll have to be reined in. Yeah. Okay. I and mean, look, the alfresco dining, people like it. So, I mean, the yeah. longer we can keep it going, the guys the happier. We have, when do you excuse me before, we have excuse a, me uh, councilmember Uring, can we take the one um public speaker we have and then you can continue your discussion sure who's the public speaker oh we've got doug stewart oh mr stewart go right ahead absolutely hey you know it's nice to be in the public 
uh, for a short period of time. I think Marianne and I both are uh, on here. So uh, the public is speaking. Hey, a um, couple of things. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize to the staff for not uh, giving a heads up on what I'm going to say in a few minutes. Uh, but this agenda just popped up yesterday on my calendar. So uh, I just did get to it this morning. Uh, first thing I want to mention is, as many of you know, I've got a background in corporate banking and investment banking. And one of the products that's in that uh, portfolio is often cash management. And cash management's um, focused on two things. One is uh, optimizing uh, safe income from your excess cash. And the other one is to minimize interest expense where you can. And as I look at the most recent Treasurer's report uh, for September 30th, I think it's on page 11 in your package, it shows we've got about $83 million of uninvested or minimally, minimally invested cash on hand. And we've got a return on that of about $370,000 a year. Uh, now, that doesn't count the, the uh, Wells Fargo advisory funds, but those are pretty minimal. So you get about $370,000 out of the uh, $83 million. Now, if you look back in history, this would be a somewhat reasonable return. And if you look back a year ago, um, uh, the 81 day, or the 91 day uh, treasury bill rate was five basis points. Well, today it's almost, uh, it's 4.3% was at the auction this morning. So if we start putting our cash management tools back in place, and I got to tell you, every corporate uh, that I know is doing the same thing. They're dusting off the old books and saying, wait a minute, we've got excess cash here. We need to reinvest it better. If we were to put that, uh, say, $80 million of cash in a 4% return, we'd have about $3.6 million versus $370,000 annual, annual income. That's about 6 or 7% of the general uh, budget. So I think it's worth looking at. And it's about the same amount as we are going to get annually out of the tax increase we just passed. So I think it'd be a, a well well time to get a pivot to do better cash management in here. Second thing I want to mention is projected reserves for right now is 122%. I know we've been fixated before at 65% or 75% to hold the AA, AAA rating that we see. But I think it's time for us to take a hard look and see if uh, maybe we ought to do some one-time expenditures. And I think uh, uh, Assistant City Manager just mentioned that. And also look at uh, either doing prepayment or defeasance on any uh, city debt that we have that's got restrictions on the uh, excess land that we have. If we're able to take some of those restrictions off about parking or usage and so forth by paying off the debt, I think that might be a worthwhile thing to look at because you're probably going to look at a positive yield between um, if you were to do a defeasance, you could have a positive return on it. So my time Mr. is Stewart, up. Your time is up. I knew it, Mary. I knew you're going to get me. All right. With that, thanks very much. Okay. Um, thank you, um, Steve. Yeah. As I, you I were. Think, yes. I think, Doug, you know, you got to talk to Ruthie Quinto. Maybe she can get on the next meeting because this that really falls under her bailiwick there. Uh, but I mean, sounds good. I, you know, again, that's the, above, above my pay grade there. So I'll pass on that for the moment. They, I just want to, I forget what I want. Uh, software. Do, do you think we'll have the, our, the RFPs back from potential software vendors sometime in the near future? I mean, I sit back and, and you, you look at some of the things we really need, and, you know, some implemented software is somewhere high on that list. Uh, we got the share station coming up. So there are some expenses, you know, co coming at us. But that software thing is just something that I really spent a lot of time thinking about. So I mean, Council Member I, I, I'm assuming you're talking about the land management system, the permitting right. software. Yes. Yes, uh, we actually did. Uh, we're in the the throes right now, starting to review those. We're going to be having vendor demonstrations with staff in the coming months and trying to identify which one's our best one. And we also want to try to make sure that as we're doing uh, the development services study too, that we're making sure that we're uh, developing and having the right processes in place uh, so that we can have that system be successful cool. uh, and make sure yeah. we're choosing the right one. Okay. Excellent. That's all I got, Mikey. Beautiful. Um, Doug, yeah, I think Steve nailed it. You should talk to Ruthie. It's, uh, I had similar, when I got on council, similar comments on 
some of the money when, and uh, Ruthie can illuminate you on why we're, we're at where we're at and what our options are. Um, it's, uh, some, it's, it is eye catching. And yes, I don't think this first quarter report really shows much other than, you know, it's all, yeah, there's, there's no red flags. Let's put it that way. That's for sure. So uh, I, at this point, don't have any more comments other than I, the one that was in the back of my mind that uh, Doug brought up is, yeah, if there is a time for one-time expenses, it's we're probably there now. And uh, that's something the new council can discuss what that might be, um, if, if it should be. Um, very pleased. Uh, you know, I was iffy on the sales tax increase, but um, I'm glad the residents voted for it in the sense that at least we get it instead of the county. So I think that's a fair trade. And uh, I'm sure they just swooped in for it at some point if we didn't. So uh, that's, that's all I got. And what kind of motion do we need on this? Uh, Council Member, if I could just make a quick comment before you oh, please, receive please, the report. Please, please. Yes. You Thank you. Just, just real briefly, um, I, I, many of you probably um, saw the news that came out a couple of weeks ago about the state of California uh, projecting a potential 25 billion deficit in the next fiscal year, which uh, if you're like me, that definitely got my attention. Of course, just for everybody knows that the you know state budget uh, and their revenues operate radically different than, than the city of Malibu's or like many general law cities in the state of California. Uh, and the state's revenues are, are really heavily geared towards capital gains. Uh, and the state actually gets a lot of its revenue from the, the top 1% uh, income earners in the state. So that is why the state is looking at a much, you know, looking at a, a potentially dire budget picture for next year. Uh, we're obviously watching that and what it might mean in terms of, you know, state clawbacks or things like that. Um, but but in terms of, of our revenues and everything else, obviously what you see, it looks it looks pretty secure there. So I just wanted to note that, um, you know, we always get a little nervous when we see what's happening with the state. Uh, but I wanted to, uh, to assure the council members that, uh, you know, we're not looking at uh, falling off the uh, fiscal cliff like the state of California is projecting. Yeah, let's not budget like the state. Let's Gosh, not. no, no. Uh, yeah. Let's not spend what we don't have. And uh We'll be good. Yeah, I still, I you know, I still don't understand how you can go from this huge surplus to the, you know, but. Well, to dovetail that, or as Steve's alluding to, our, our revenue base is much less elastic, so we have a very right. inelastic property tax with property tax. Um, so that that's where we're much more stable. Well, that helped us get through the pandemic because some of these other cities that re rely on sales taxes got buried. Right. Our property taxes sort of gave us a lift, which was which was good. So, okay, I, I've got. I'm sorry, Nick. I got nothing else to say, Mike. It's up to you. Oh, you're good. Uh, yeah, we're not like Santa Monica. Thank goodness on yeah. that elasticity thing. That was a nightmare. All right, uh, looking for an uh, approval of the minute. Um, oops, wait, minutes. Sorry, I'm on we the approved the minutes. I think this is this another receive and file job. What is this? Yes. Um, is it is it receive and file? So I got lost here on the agenda. Report. Mary, I don't even know if we need to make them. Oh, yeah. Just review. You don't. No, it is just review and provide feedback. You don't have to have a motion. Okay, cool. I think the whole city council will be happy to see this stuff. Yeah, thank you, everyone, for your work. And um, this meeting is adjourned. Adios, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.